Ned Connor was noted, but fierce for the drink. One of the pledges he took only allowed him one drink a day. He settled for a pint, and he got into the habit of taking the pint about closing time or a little after it. And there is a bit of history attached to that too, and I might as well tell it while I'm at it. Ned had a white tomcat that used to follow him everywhere. He'd go up the stairs after Ned every night when he was going to bed, and Ned'd be tricking with the cat, and they'd have a little boxing match out through the banisters of the stairs. Uh, when Ned'd take his trousers off, he'd put it in the seat of the chair, and the cat'd make a hammock of that until morning. He'd cross the street every night after him, and the cat'd sit in the windowsill of the pub until Ned came out. The cat was as well known as a bad halfpenny. People passing along the village at night and seeing him sitting in the windowsill of Meshkill's pub knew that Ned Connor was inside having his daily imperial, as he used to call it, which he never went beyond, and his temperance brought him a little prosperity. You see, he had a fine roomy house, and the wife, encouraged by the aunt he had, began to keep people, turned it into a lodging house. Two young guards used to have their dinner there, Ah, the force was only in its infancy at the time. The guards weren't long coming to the house when they were like one of the family. Here they'd go in and sit in the kitchen and throw their caps on top of the dresser. In the kitchen they came to know the cat, and they came to know too about Ned's habit of going across the road to Meshkill's pub for his daily pint after closing time, and knowing Ned so well they'd never raid the pub while the cat was sitting outside in the windowsill. Raiding pubs was almost a nightly occurrence at that time, for the licensing laws were not as liberal as they are now. The weekly paper would be full of court cases. I saw it given down in the paper myself where a guard at twelve o'clock at night after being given an assurance by the publican that there was no one on the premises. The guard went upstairs, opened the door of a wardrobe, and a man fell out. People would go into an auger hall rather than have their names in the paper. The same guard swore that in another room he found three men sound asleep in a small bed with the claws up to their chins, the picture of innocence. What they didn't know was that their feet were cocking out at the bottom of the bed. I wonder they didn't feel the cold, says the judge. How could they, says the guard, and they're having their shoes on. But to go back to Ned, I was in Meshkills myself one night when he came in. Even though it was gone closing time, there was a big crowd inside. There was something on in the village the same day. I think it was a bull inspection, and the publican was in no hurry out with him. Now that Ned was inside and the cat outside, he felt safe. At least for the length of time, it took Ned to down one imperial pint. The talk was nice and leisurely, and Ned had been no more than halfway down the glass when there was a sharp knock at the front door. Open up in the name of the law. Crane deal, says Ned. It must be strange guards, our own lads that have seen the cat. Clear, says the publican, frightened of an endorsement in his license, out the back. And he began to pour drink down the shore. In another second, the lights were out, totally eclipsed. And there was what I can only describe as a stampede towards where we thought the back door should be. We were going into presses and closets and everything. And when we found out the door, the first of the crowd out were bolting back like a squad of rabbits that had met a ferret in the turn of a burrow. There was another guard, do you see, at the back gate. Now we all made for the stairs, and some of us got out the upper window onto the roof of a shed. And the plan was, if our geography was correct, to get down in ten neighbours' yard and make good our escape. And do you know what I'm going to say now? The corrugated iron roof of a shed on a wet night is an awful slippery place. The legs were taken from under one fella, and he went sliding down and fell ten feet on top of God only knows what. I could not repeat here what he said, and he had hardly himself straightened up when another fella fell on top of him. Well, there was one huge corporation of a man there. They told me after that he was home on holidays from America, I don't know, but we were all hanging out him. Blessed out tonight if the man didn't lose his balance and crashed in the flat of his back on the roof, bringing us all down with him. Such a report, cows, pigs, geese, all the animals in the vicinity woke up as we went skeeting down the roof and fell on top of one another into the black hole of Calcutta. Then you heard language. Drink lubricates the talking machine. Twas like Dunkirk. And to make matters worse, whatever way it happened, down into the publican's yard we fell. The police were there before us, our names were taken, and so we had all our work for nothing. When we came out in the street, Ned Connor went straight to the windowsill, but there was no sign of the white cat. 
He couldn't believe his eyes, but whatever look he gave, there below on the school wall was Ned Connor's white cat holding a loud conversation with a member of his own community. Well, bad manners to you anyway for a white cat, says Ned, rubbing his shins. I'd have nearly gone without my imperial pint tonight if I knew that you had a date.